Hey everyone, welcome back to Columbia City, our Pacific Northwest wonderland here where last episode we finished the cove over here with the um, amusement park that we moved from downtown. We built Mason Botanical Garden, lots of stuff there, but this episode we're working on the other side of downtown over here on this hill. We're going to be building a new district with some apartment buildings, but also a lot of zoned residential. So let's get straight into things. So welcome back, everyone. Hopefully you're doing well. Uh, we're back here for another episode of Columbia City. And in this episode, we're actually going to be doing a bunch of important expansion into an area that's extremely close to downtown, yet hasn't received any development. First of all, though, we're connecting it to the hill on the other side of the freeway. What we're going to do here is we're actually placing a bridge prop um, and then POing it. Uh, I, I believe it's a prop, at least. It might actually be a building regardless i've po'd it and i've kind of rotated it so that it's at an angle um so that this really stupid um you know, bridge can go across here i i, I mean it looks super cool it's just kind of inefficient um but i mean there is one like this in seattle on the same spot so i figured i figured i'd go for it um and yeah um this episode is going to be interesting we, we don't do um a lot of unique work on some sort of unique project we're just making a district from scratch and um i, I like those episodes because i get to um i mean they tend to be pretty similar to each other but um but we will have some interesting dynamics here because on the other side of the freeway it's it's basically just gonna be suburbs um even though we're, we're so close to downtown but um it's just kind of because of the dividing line of the freeway um and there have historically been you know a lot of older buildings over there it was developed maybe later than the rest of the city for the most part um and that's because of the topography it's just on a hill so it wasn't as feasible to build there as maybe some of the flatter areas in the city so yeah like there are older buildings here but um a lot of them are you know some like single family houses um and we will have some newer apartments though like you'll see a bunch of new um apartments here on this hill sort of overlooking downtown but it's going to be concentrated into this one little um district here and i'm trying to figure the road layout out we're, we're basing this off of the neighborhood that's actually in actually basing it pretty closely off this neighborhood in seattle i believe it's called north beacon hill um and it's sort of at the same spot by the freeway and um it's a really interesting neighborhood because there's a park that kind of goes um, along the side of the freeway basically and then there's this neighborhood on a hill through the park goes a bike path so we're gonna add a bike path just like that um, here in Columbia City but right now I'm working on um, this kind of road that goes along the side of the freeway I'm trying to connect some other roads uh, kind of up to it I'm trying to make sure that the road layout is like organized around a general grid pattern but is a little bit messy um just because that's kind of realistic for um you know, a neighborhood like this that is you know a little bit old um like this isn't a new neighborhood you know uh it's not one of the more highly developed places of the city in you know previous times but the grid was the grid was planned um a while ago um and it's a little messy but for the most part pretty coherent but we will end up actually zoning suburbs on this episode. I keep mentioning that I'm going to kind of tell you exactly um, what mods I'm using and like how I'm zoning these suburbs effectively, but I haven't exactly gotten my method down yet. Um, but we're close, and the mods that I'm using are in the description in my mods collection. But I'll kind of talk about the specifics um, in a different episode, but you'll see a little bit later that we do actually um, zone suburbs here. And uh, another thing is people have been asking about the Netherlands, like when's the Netherlands coming back? And I, I might have mentioned you know, in a Q&A portion previous video, but um, I've got like an episode in the works right now. And I'm pretty sure that'll be the next video um, whenever that comes out, either one or two weeks from now. So for those wondering, that is you know that that's when the Netherlands is coming out. And if you want to see it early, you can head over to my Patreon. That's in the description uh, down below. Upload that early for patrons. Uh, I think you'll like it. But for now, we're 
kind of working here in Columbia City because I, I found it a lot easier to make Columbia City videos and a lot easier to find inspiration to do so. Um, so that's why that's why you've been seeing a lot more of these. Um, like I feel obligated to do a lot more research for uh, the Netherlands because I'm less acquainted with it. But yeah, I mean here I'm like I know how West Coast cities were planned basically. Um, like I haven't been to the Pacific Northwest specifically, but I'm generally able to deduce like how um, all of this kind of worked based on my experiences with you know the Bay Area, for example, and um, just general knowledge. It's it's a little bit different than um, a European city. So now we've started the actual development for this neighborhood. I'm starting to place some buildings here. You'll notice that a lot of the buildings I'm placing are kind of lower density at first. And that's basically because, yeah, I mean, like this neighborhood historically has not been highly developed just because it's been on a hill and because you know, Columbia City is surrounded by you know so much other terrain that's maybe more buildable. Um, so here on this hill, there, there hasn't really been as much built in the past um but that's changing we've got old, like some newer apartment buildings for example and um yeah i mean lots of lots of suburbs that you'll see um and those suburbs will be uh, kind of a mix of new and old i do want to start making videos that are more focused on um like very specific projects um for columbia city because i have done a lot of expansion videos you know recently and a, lo a lot of them end up being similar like these neighborhoods are totally different from each other but they've got really common themes common buildings so um, for unique types of builds like one build that's been suggested a lot is some sort of boeing airplane factory which i mean i feel like for a seattle type city it, it it's kind of a, you know, a waste to not build that um, in this series, even if I maybe do it badly. Um, but I, I want to try that. Just other unique builds like that. Uh, I want to focus the episodes around. And I do want to start... I did I did a stream um, last weekend for Columbia City, and I want to start streaming more, because I'm able to do, like for example, like neighborhoods like this. I redid the entire um, you know suburban area that we built earlier on in the series and filled in a bunch of areas um, that... You know, it was kind of tedious, but we had fun talked with um jay and do not eat like that was a fun stream and uh, i want to do more stuff like that to fill in areas like this but i want to build more you know unique things like focal points in episodes and maybe add some um suburbs or whatever around them um but for the most part yeah i want to try to transition away from episodes like these it's just this one really needed to be made like this district is pretty distinctive it's it's right here um on on the hill near downtown so and, and i i had just been waiting to build this for a while because i wasn't exactly sure how i was going to do the infrastructure for it but i think going with that the style of bridge that there is in seattle just sort of going over the freeway like that was uh was the right move i'm pretty happy with it um and the development here i wasn't exactly sure what to do either i was going to do some sort of hospital but um i ended up just going with this one um really tall apartment building uh, here that you can see that kind of looks like it's from Vancouver or something um, and then there's you know, the other sort of red apartment building towards the the bike trail uh, which by the way this is a nice bike trail and I would definitely uh, enjoy riding this one thing I will do though in the future is uh, people have been definitely asking like where are all of the homeless encampments because there is a housing crisis in you know the Pacific Northwest generally and Seattle specifically um and yeah I, I will add those that's another thing I'm probably going to do in like a stream I sort of go throughout the city and do that because uh, I can copy paste stuff pretty easily I also don't have the proper props downloaded um but yeah we'll definitely add some homeless encampments probably a lot of them near like you know wealthier glass condos um in areas where like just just to demonstrate the really stark income inequality of this sort of booming tech bubble of the pacific northwest um you know compared to the the displacement that's occurring which is um really 
really not good and it's I mean it's based on a lot more than just um, the supply of housing like an, another thing that needs to be considered is like people's incomes aren't exactly rising to keep up um, especially with a lot of the, the new demands so yeah uh, but I definitely do want to demonstrate that and not just ignore it um, in the uh, in this project because it's a pretty important issue for the Pacific Northwest and I'm sure you know, anybody who lives in the Pacific Northwest in a city like Seattle or Portland will kind of understand that or even in SF or LA or any other city that's got a homelessness crisis so I'll definitely add those um, in the future and to areas like the path there I, I think there are um, a lot of encampments like under the freeway interchange um, near that near that um, near where that bike path is in Seattle so I'll keep that in mind um, and yeah, I'm just kind of detailing around. I, people have been complaining that I haven't been placing like enough schools. So I am doing that. I'm placing a school guys. I'm doing it. Um, and I, I know I haven't, I just, I haven't been working on the suburbs much, um, yet. And a lot of the areas in the city are not really going to have like sports fields and, just, you know, suburban style high schools. I'm just assuming those like a high school in the, in the middle of the city is going to be in some sort of office building. At least I don't really know how urban, um, schools work in, in Seattle, but, um, yeah, now that we're moving out towards the suburbs, at least it makes sense to, um, place a nice big high school there. I do place an elementary school later in the episode two. We got a police station, lots of services. I'm trying not to ignore services, um, just because it's realistic to have those those buildings in the city, and um, yeah, just building some like various apartments here. I'm trying to have like a nice diverse district that's clearly clearly go undergoing um, a lot of redevelopment right now. Not necessarily gentrification. Like this is a pretty nice area um, we're working on right now because gentrification doesn't. You know, it's it's not the redevelopment itself. It's it's just um, higher income people moving into a lower income area, um, is what that would be. Um, not necessarily occurring here. Like this is a pretty nice suburban area. Now we're placing a nice elementary school here, um, in the in this sort of broken area of the grid that I made and nice little parking lot. Not much to say here, but you saw that all those houses got placed super quickly. Um, there were a couple little things I had to sort out, but um, I, w I managed to get all those houses zoned very effectively. The only thing I would have done differently for this district, if I were to zone again, and I might actually do this, is to just use 2x4 buildings, because this is pretty close to the city, so I'm, I'm assuming like the houses here will be on like smaller lots and I kind of realized that as you can see like at this point I'm trying to zone individual lots um, rather than just just zoning everything because it'll spawn like four by four buildings uh, and I want to try to avoid that because it's not completely realistic to have lots that are that big here and I've made like a building theme that's just two by four buildings um, that I will kind of use for the rest of the areas that are kind of like this but um, here I might go back and change that, or at least a lot of the 4x4 buildings, because it doesn't feel realistic. And I feel like all I would need to do is just, um, select all the buildings with, uh, with move it, and then, um, and then rezone the area. I think I'd, I could probably get away with that, but we'll see. That's another thing for, like, a stream. I don't want to do that stuff in episodes, and I don't really have time to work off camera, so I, at least I want to be streaming, you know, while I'm doing stuff like that. And, uh, you guys seem to enjoy the stream, so... Uh, now that I've got gigabit internet, I feel like I'm kind of obligated to stream more, so hopefully I can, uh, I can start, start doing that. the city nears 100,000 in population um, as you can see there the game's actually paused right now but we'll hit it pretty soon um, and that's the title of this video because I couldn't think of anything else and that's kind of cool because I haven't hit 100,000 in in years since I started playing the game so 
that I mean I think we're at like 120,000 now even now that I've expanded more but um city's getting big that's that's the point here um it's the takeaway from having 100,000 population might not look big might look like we've got a lot to expand to but um we're, we're making progress and I think this episode's pretty good evidence of that. Anyway, it's time for the Q&A segment where I answer your questions in the comments. Tagged hashtag Q&A. Let me know what your questions are and I'll try to get to as many as I can. Starting off here from Big Daddy, what type of bike do you ride and what's your favorite place to go biking? Uh, I ride a specialized Alay Elite and it's got um, Durace wheels on it. And my favorite place right now to go biking is in... Marin County, um, across the bay from me, riding in the hills is just, it's just beautiful and I can't get enough of it. Um, the next question from Tech Needs T is, so about Vancouver, what would you think of building a very small metro system similar to the SkyTrain in Vancouver? Um, I won't be doing that just because I've already kind of developed the public transportation system for Columbia City. I understand why you'd want that. Um, but we're just going to stick to the light rail system here and the, the models for the light rails that we've got are super satisfying. Um, the link light rails are, they're just amazing. So we'll be sticking to those. Uh, next question from Wofi is how many assets and mods does it say you have in the loading screen? Um, it says at this point I have about 6,700, I believe it used to be like more like 8,000 and that's when my game was crashing a lot more. So I think this is about my upper limit. So I'm going to have to remove um mod or i'm gonna have to remove assets as i add more um basically moving forward um next question from vivian uh, if you live in columbia city what would be your favorite activity and why um i feel like if i lived in columbia city i'd have to get into some sort of water activity like kayaking or something because there's just so much water everywhere i feel like that's um something that people in seattle will do a lot as well um, but I mean, I definitely love to ride my road bike around here and probably my mountain bike around Yesler Park and the dirt trails. Um, so I, I feel like there'd be a lot of different activities. I don't know what I'd be able to choose, but I mean, just based on what I enjoy right now, probably some sort of cycling activity. Um, next question from Snowy Games is what other games do you enjoy playing and would you ever consider playing those games on your channel? I don't play any other games. You won't see any other, any other games on my channel until further notice. I'm boring. I just build cities. So that's what you're going to see. Um, next question from CoasterFan13. Hey Prez, what are your plans for a regional rail network? How would you want it? How would you want it to work? And what city would you take inspiration for the rail network from? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm basically planning a regional rail network. If you're if you're talking about like a passenger rail network, um, it's going to be something like a, uh, like the Sound Transit Sounder Rail in Seattle. But um, we're also going to have like an Amtrak system that theoretically goes to. Um, other Pacific Northwest cities, if that makes sense. Uh, and then the other question from CoasterFan13 was, do you use any demand mods? If so, which one? I do use Super Demands, and that's just so zoning works properly. Uh, next question from Jesse101Gaming is, have you been to the DC area before? If so, what are your thoughts? Um, I have been to the DC area. I've been there a bunch of times, and I was there, I, I was a lot younger when I was there, and I definitely did not know anything about urban planning, but I mean, DC's really cool, and I definitely love to go back there. Um, but that's mostly all I remember. I just remember I liked it. And now it's time for the flyover segment, probably my favorite part of the video. Um, here's the bridge we built. I like it a lot. It'll come together. This whole area that you see empty back there was it was developed on the stream after this uh, was recorded, so. Um, you'll see it at some point um, in the next episode, and it, it really came together well, and the area is looking very complete, so I think you'll like it. But yeah, these are the suburbs that we, we placed this episode. I might add, like, you see I left a lot of the areas over here open by that um, avenue with the BRT. Um, that's because I want those areas to be upzoned a little bit around the avenue as transit-oriented development, which will build that BRT avenue uh, up in a future episode or on stream or something but i mean probably in a future episode i really want to focus on on brt in an individual episode um because i think that'd be cool and a bunch of new bus roads came on the workshop so i'm gonna grab those but yeah that's basically what we built this episode huge amount of progress it's basically the entire size of downtown that is the power of zoning folks um anyway we're here sort of on top of the bridge um, the sidewalks on the bridge are a little bit glitchy, like, people just walk, like, on the guardrails, or in the guardrails, 
or the, the railings. And those railings look a little bit sketchy. Like, there should be some sort of, like, higher railing so people don't jump. But um, I feel like that'd be kind of hard to put there because it's on a slope. But maybe we'll do that in the future. Anyway, um, here we are sort of flying over this main road here. I used the big urban roads for, um, for like, that main sort of road through the district and then most of the roads that you'll see in the rest of the district like they're they're either like this one's um one of the big urban roads and then i use a bunch of cluss american roads um and i think it was a good combination like using the two together makes it look uh, a lot more diverse i've also been as you can see like adding like different brightness levels to the roads and i think that adds a lot as well because not all roads are equally maintained so i think that makes sense anyway hopefully you enjoyed if you did a like would be highly appreciated if you watch youtube you know why why to like videos so i don't really have to tell you that subscribe if you're new to the channel and want to see more um the next video should be an episode of the netherlands so if you want to check that out early it'll be posted uh, early on Patreon, so uh, head over there. That's in the description. You can get early access to new videos ad-free. You can get um, you know, your name in the credits. You can get shout-outs, like quick shout-out to Anthony Perez, David, Dental Wright, Jade Schuyler, and Emma Log. Thank you all so much for your support and um, patronage. And I mean, you can support me however you'd like. But if you want to, you know, give me a a little bit of uh, cash and. Um, and maybe get access to the save game, uh, download the save game, or any other Patreon perk, then you could head over to my Patreon. That's the description. Highly appreciate If you want to just give me a one-time tip, buy me a coffee, you can also do that in the description. Or if you just want to follow me on Twitter, that is there too. I post a lot on Twitter, um, and I think you'll enjoy my content if you are interested in cities, interested in, um, I mean, really anything related to what I do on my channel. I post a lot of stuff there retweet cool content i think i think you'd enjoy it so follow me that's in the description hopefully you enjoyed the video and see you next time for an episode of the netherlands later